Good, good evening from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV. We are graced with the presence of the Iraq Neurosurgery Grand Rounds headed by Samer Hose, noted educator, budding educator and neurosurgeon with, a, I believe, a heavy interest in vascular uh, in neurosurgery in Iraq. He formed this group a couple of years ago. He could probably tell you a little bit about it, but welcome. I'll let Samer run the show. Welcome, Samer. You got to unmute, Samer. Unmute. Unmute. Oh, uh, I think he may be frozen. Oh, he fell off. Well, I guess uh, I'll introduce Sarah. Uh, Sarah is a med student, and uh, she can tell a little bit about herself before she starts her introduction. Uh, greetings, Sarah. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Fala, and I'm a medical student from Baghdad University College of Medicine, and I'm uh, interested in uh, plastic surgery. Hi, everyone. Yes, okay. Can you uh, <clears throat> explain the title of your presentation, etc.? Uh, yeah, but it's uh, not um, the first, uh, my colleague, it's uh, the first one, first presenter. Oh, okay. uh, so, we, always, yeah. we get, always get everything exactly wrong. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, I was mistaken there because we had some internet problems with Samer, who will be back shortly, but uh, we'll, we'll let, let Fatima take over. Welcome, Fatima. Could you introduce yourself and explain your, your title, etc.? Uh, welcome. Uh, hi, everyone. I am Fatma Aday Ahmed, a medical student from uh, Baghdad, Iraq. Um, I am a, I'm, I'm really interested in neurosurgery as a, a future career. And uh, today we are presenting the flaps from a neurosurgical and plastic surgery perspectives. I'll start, then my colleague will take over me. Okay. I, uh... Okay. Uh, we will wait, uh, uh, Dr. Summer. No, I think we can start because he seems to be have serious problems. Okay, so I'll start uh, share screen. Okay. Yes. So, my yes. present. Perfect. I'll start now. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, as I said, my presentation will be on the scalp flaps from the neurosurgical perspective. Uh, my presentation will be a rapid review on the scalp anatomy and the most common approaches in a neurosurgery. The scalp region started anteriorly. Uh, at the, uh, with the anterior hairline, then goes posteriorly to the superior nuchal line, and then go then the laterally to the posterior part of the zygomatic arch. The superior region started anteriorly by the union of the zygomatic process uh, and uh, uh, of the frontal bone and the uh, and the frontal process of the zygomatic bone, then will goes superiorly and laterally along the superior temporal line, and will uh, bounded inferiorly by uh, the zygomatic arch. The scalp, the scalp consists uh, consist, uh, the scalp consists of five layers, and uh, this uh, and this uh, and uh, the scalp, uh, the word itself will uh, it's early, uh, it's actually a mnemonic for its uh, structure. Uh, the first layer is the skin, uh, as skin and C for connective tissue or, or subcutaneous tissue. The A, epineurotic and muscle layer, or called the galli epineurotica. The L, loose areolar tissue. The P, pericranium. The skin of the, of the scalp is one of the most thickest uh, skin in the body, the thickest area at the occiput and the thinnest area at the vertex. The second layer is, a sub, is the subcutaneous tissue. 
It's a fibro fatty dense vascular layer. It is a fibro because it's contained this fibrous septa that interposed by fat. And this fibrous septa will freely connect the skin above to the, under, uh, to the galia below. Um, and uh, these, these three layers together will form this scalp proper. It's uh, a four to seven millimeter, so it's a dense layer, and uh, it's a highly vascular layer, so it's contained the major uh, arterial supply and the main arterial supply of the scalp. The third layer, it's ge the galea epineuroticae. It's the intermediate part between the occipitalis muscle and the frontalis muscle. It's a thin and it's inelastic. And that's because uh, the tension that's applied uh, by the occipitalis muscle. Uh, these muscles are uh, supplied by the facial nerve. The loose areolar tissue, it's a, a thin and relatively avascular layer. It enables the sliding of the galea over the pericranium. The pericranium is the deepest layer and uh, it's removable except for the area above the sutures. The temple, uh, the temple layer is, it, uh, has a different arrangement from the scalp. It uh, consists of skin and uh, also skin and subcutaneous tissue. Uh, and uh, we have the temporoparietal fascia, which is the continuation or, or the lateral extension of the galea epineurotica in the scalp. This temporoparietal fascia, it's, uh, it's on the same level of this uh, auricular muscles, which all supplied also by the facial nerve. The importance of this temporoparietal fascia that contain one of the major arterial supply of the scalp which is the superficial temporal artery. Um, from deep to superficial, the temple, uh, uh, the temple layers start uh, pericranium, then uh, the temporalis muscle, which is supplied by the mandibular division of the trigeminal. It's uh, directly adhered to the bone, then uh, the, uh, the temporalis fascia, then the loose areolar tissue, then our temporoparietal uh, fascia, and this uh, temporal fascia will continue as the superficial musculoapaneurotic system of the face. Uh, two centimeter above the zygomatic arch, the temporal fascia will divide into a superficial temporal fascia and a deep temporal fascia. Uh, the, the superficial uh, tem uh, fat pad Superficial temporal fat pad will interpose between them, and the deep fat pad uh, will uh, be found deeper to the uh, deep temporal fascia. The scalp, uh, the scalp, uh, the, uh, the blood supply uh, scalp comes from two main sources: the internal carotid artery through the ophthalmic, who gives us uh, the, sup uh, the supratrochlear artery and the supraorbital artery. The, the other main source is the external carotid artery with the terminal branch, which is the superficial temporal artery with its frontal and parietal branches, and the preterminal branch with the posterior auricular artery and the, the occipital artery. Uh, uh, from internal carotid, uh, we start with the, let's start with the uh, supratrochlear artery. Uh, it's a small artery. Uh, thing, one finger breath away from the midline, it supplies small area uh, of the forehead. Then uh, the supraorbital artery, it's a three centimeter away to, to the midline and it supply uh, the area till the vertex. Uh, the, um, uh, in the lateral region, we have the terminal branch of the, super, uh, of the external cartilage, which is the superficial temporal artery, STA will supply this lateral area and, uh, and extend to the surrounding area. The preterminal branch of the external carotid, the posterior auricular artery, will supply a small area behind the ear. And uh, lastly, the large occipital artery will supply uh, uh, the posterior part to the vertex. The venous, uh, the veins of the scalp, or actually the superficial veins of the scalp, uh, have the same branches of the artery. So uh, the supraorbital vein and supra, uh, the supraorbital vein and the suprastrochlear vein would, will drain uh, in, the, in the angular vein that with the defacial vein will form the facial vein. 
the same uh, superficial temporal vein with uh, the frontal and parietal uh, tributaries. This uh, superficial temporal vein with the maxillary vein will drain or will form the retromandibular vein that have an anterior division that with the facial vein will form the common facial vein. And this common facial vein will eventually drain at, uh, in the internal jugular vein. The posterior division of the retromandibular with the posterior auricular vein will both will, uh, will both will drain into the external jugular vein. Uh, lastly, for the occipital uh, vein, will drain into a deep cervical uh, venous plexus. And um, regarding the deep, there is more details, but uh, it's, uh, however, it's not uh, our point of focusing here. Um, uh, as the final destination of the venous drainage of uh, the head uh, of the scalp, uh, it will illustrate it in this W arrangement, uh, the retromandibular vein with its anterior division that will, uh, with the facial vein will form the common facial vein, then will drain into the internal jugular vein. The posterior division with the posterior auricular vein that both will drain in the external jugular vein. The, the nerve supply of the scalp also comes from two main sources. Um, anterior to the vertex will supply by the cranial nerve, um, it's more specifically the trigeminal nerve. And posterior to the vertex will, su will supply by the cervical spinal nerves. Um, and the, the anterior area supplied by the supratrochlear and the supraorbital nerves from the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. A bit laterally, was supplied by the zygomaticotemporal nerves, uh, branches from the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. And uh, the lateral region was supplied by the auriculotemporal nerve from uh, a branch from the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. The posterior area will supply by the cervical nerves. We have the, the greater occipital and the lesser occipital from C2 spinal nerves and the third occipital from the third cervical and the great auricular from both C2 and C3. Um, before ending the basic anatomy, um, let's uh, get through, uh, let's discuss the neurovascular pedicles in the skull. Uh, the supraorbital pedicle and the um, supraorbital pedicle and the medial frontal pedicle and the anterior group. We have um, the temporal and the mastoid pedicles in the lateral group and the occipital uh, pedicle in the occipital region. In general, the approaches in a neurosurgery are classified into supratentorial and infratentorial approaches uh, according to this anatomical structure called the tentorium cerebelli. And uh, also we have a combined approaches and uh, each one of uh, uh, these uh, approaches has uh, many approaches uh, under uh, its, uh, 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 many approaches subcategorized under it. For the common approaches in neurosurgery, we will discuss the trional approach, the frontal with its supraorbital and the unilateral bicoronal and bicoronal types, the temporal approach, the occipital approach, and the midline suboccipital. The trional approach is the most common approach we use in neurosurgery. Uh, uh, we use we we make a curvy a curvy linear incision one centimeter anterior to tragus, then run posterior to the hairline, then will uh, to, to end at the widow's peak. The critical structure is the superficial temporal artery and the temporal branch of the facial nerve. So as we said, uh, as I said, uh, one centimeter anterior to tragus. So uh, one centimeter, not less, to preserve the, uh, the superficial temporal artery posteriorly and uh, one centimeter, not two, to preserve the, uh, the temporal branch of the, uh, of the facial nerve. Uh, the vascular pedicle contain the superficial temporal artery and the supraorbital and the supratrochlear uh, arteries. 
uh, indication for this approach, uh, anterior circulation aneurysm and the paracellular lesion. The supraorbital uh, approach, a slightly curved incision uh, started at the supraorbital notch uh, and then goes laterally in, uh, in, in, the, burrows, in the burrows line. Uh, the critical structure are uh, the supraorbital artery and nerve, and uh, also uh, uh, the temporal branch of the facial nerve. Uh, the indication, uh, this, uh, this is a minimal invasive um, approach. So um, it's used for some anterior circulation, aneurysm, and parasolar lesion. Unilateral and bicoronal approaches, uh, we can do two incision. The unilateral frontal temporal, which start uh, the same starting point as the trional, one centimeter anterior to the uh, tragus, then curve uh, a bit posterior to the coronal suture, then uh, to, uh, to, uh, to end two centimeter at the contralateral side uh, behind the hairline. Uh, the bicoronal, the, the same starting point, ipsilateral to end to the contralateral point. Uh, the critical structure here uh, follow the same principles of the trional because it's the same uh, starting point. Uh, the vascular pedicle uh, contain the superficial temporal artery and bilateral arteries for the bicoronal approach. And also the supraorbital and supratrochlear and the frontotemporal and the unilateral frontotemporal um, uh, approach and uh, bilateral arteries uh, for the bicoronal approach. Um, the frontal region lesions uh, is an indication, one of the indication for this approach. The temporal approach, uh, also we can do um, a question mark incision or linear incision, the question mark, same starting point, then we'll uh, curve um, posteriorly at the level above um, vertical to the pin of the ear, then we'll end at the superior temporal line. Linear incision, same starting and uh, the same uh, supra, uh, superior temporal line. The critical structure here follow the same uh, principles of the um, terional. Uh, the vascular pedicle contain the superficial temporal artery. Indication of the, uh, one of the indication is the temporal lobectomy used in epilepsy surgeries. The occipital approach, um, also we can do two incision. We can do the horseshoe incision starting from the inion, then we will curve the progress progressively to the posterior uh, to end at the mastoid. Uh, or we can do an alternative, alternative linear incision. The critical structure are uh, the occipital artery and the greater occipital nerve, uh, which is uh, the, same, um, con uh, the same structure of the vascular pedicle. The, uh, the occipital region tumors is uh, one of the, uh, is an example for uh, the indication of this approach. And lastly, the midline suboccipital approach. Um, uh, usually we started at the C2, uh, C2 vertebrae and uh, go superiorly to the external uh, occipital protuberance. Um, uh, posterior fossa tumors and posterior circulation aneurysm are the indication for this approach. And I finished my presentation. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, I, I present, uh, I present uh, a general uh, review of the scalp uh, of the flaps in the neurosurgical pers uh, pr perspective. We discussed the, the anatomy and uh, the, co the common uh, approaches in the neurosurgery. Uh, now my friend will proceed uh, uh, with uh, her perspective and we will take the question after she finish. Thank you. Okay, excellent, Fatima. Thank you very much.